Hello and good day. Our topic for today is partnership liquidation. Partnership liquidation is the fourth topic in accounting for special transactions. And this is part four of the accounting for partnerships. Let's start. Liquidation is defined as the termination of business operations or the winding up of affairs. Take note that liquidation and dissolution are not the same. They are two different terms. Liquidation terminates the partnership, but dissolution does not necessarily terminate the partnership. In dissolution, there is only a change in relation of the partners. This means that the partnership is still continues to exist until the remaining partners liquidate the partnership. Liquidation is a process by which assets are converted into cash, liabilities are settled, and any remaining amount is distributed to the owners. Of course, Iko-convert yung assets into cash by selling the non-cash assets. Ibebenta yung non-cash assets ng partnership. Now, yung proceeds sa pagbenta ng non-cash assets, yan yung gagamitin to settle the liabilities or pay the outside creditors and inside creditors. And if there is a remaining cash, that remaining cash will be distributed to the partners. There are two methods of liquidation and they are first, lump sum liquidation and second, installment liquidation. In lump sum liquidation, all the non-cash assets of the partnership are sold simultaneously or within a very short period of time. And the proceeds are used to settle first all the liabilities and any remaining amount is paid to the partners under a lump sum payment. Sa lump sum liquidation, lahat ng non-cash assets ng partnership ay nabenta ng sabay-sabay. O kung hindi man nabenta ng sabay-sabay, lahat ng non-cash assets ng partnership ay nabenta within a very short period of time. Let's say one month or within one month, nabenta na lahat-lahat ng non-cash assets ng partnership. In lump sum liquidation, all of the non-cash assets of the partnership are converted into cash. Yung proceeds sa pagbenta ng lahat ng non-cash assets ay gagamitin para bayaran yung outside creditors at inside creditors. After mabayaran yung outside creditors at inside creditors, if there is remaining cash, the remaining cash will be distributed to the partners under a one-time payment or single payment. On the other hand, in installment liquidation, it would take time to convert all the non-cash assets into cash. In such a case, the partner's claims are settled on an installment basis as cash becomes available but only after all partnership liabilities are fully settled. In installment liquidation, some of the non-cash assets are converted into cash, but not all. Unlike sa lump sum liquidation na lahat ng non-cash assets ay converted into cash. As you can see, dito sa installment liquidation, the settlement of partners' claims is 
partial settlement. Unlike sa lump sum liquidation na ang settlement ng partner's claims ay full settlement. Let us now proceed to settlement of claims. The available cash of the partnership is used to settle claims in the following order of priority. First, outside creditors, second, inside creditors, and third, owner's capital balances. That means the partnership must pay first the outside creditors. After paying the outside creditors, the partnership must pay the inside creditors. Kung meron mang utang ang partnership sa partners, the partnership must pay the liabilities to the partners. After paying the outside creditors and inside creditors, if there is remaining cash, the remaining cash will be paid to the partners. In partnership liquidation, meron tayong tinatawag na right of offset. The legal right of offset allows a deficit in a partner's capital account to be offset by a loan payable to that partner. Kapag sinabing deficit, this is negative capital balance. Meaning to say, this is a capital account with a debit Balance. Ang normal balance ng capital account ay credit. If ever naging debit ang kanyang balance, that capital account is said to be deficit. Now, yung sinasabing right of offset, ididedact yung loan payable to a partner sa kanyang deficit. So, ang effect ng right of offset ay mababawasan yung deficit in a partner's capital account. Again, in a right of offset, the loan payable to a partner is deducted from the deficit in a partner's capital account. Let us now apply the concepts by answering problems. Don partnership is undergoing liquidation. Information on Don is as follows. Cash, 20,000 pesos. Accounts receivable, 60,000 pesos. Receivable from A, 10,000 pesos. Inventory, 120,000 pesos. Equipment, net of accumulated depreciation, 290,000 pesos. For total assets of 500,000 pesos. Accounts payable, 30,000 pesos. Payable to B, 20,000 pesos. A capital, 60%, 250,000 pesos. B capital, 40%, 200,000 pesos. For total liabilities and equity of 500,000 pesos. Case 1, lump sum liquidation. The non-cash assets were realized as follows. A. Only 70% of the accounts receivable was collected. The balance is uncollectible. B. 20,000 pesos was received for the entire inventory. C. The equipment was sold for 310,000 pesos. And D, 12,000 pesos liquidation expenses were paid. Requirement, compute for the cash distributions to the partners. Dito sa case 1, ang una niyong gagawin is to compute for the net proceeds. After computing the net proceeds, i-compare nyo yung net proceeds sa carrying amount of non-cash assets. Kapag mas malaki yung net proceeds kaysa sa carrying amount of non-cash assets, there is a gain. 
Kapag mas malaki yung carrying amount ng non-cash assets kaysa sa net proceeds, there is a loss. Unahin natin yung collection from accounts receivable. It says here in case 1 na only 70% of the accounts receivable was collected. 70% lang ng accounts receivable ang na-collect. That means yung 30%, i-ignore natin siya. So that means 60,000 pesos times 70%. That is equal to 42,000 pesos. Sale of inventory is 20,000 pesos. Sale of equipment is 310,000 pesos. At merong actual liquidation expenses na 12,000 pesos. Since that is a liquidation expense that should be deducted in order to arrive at the net proceeds. 42,000 pesos plus 20,000 pesos plus 310,000 pesos minus 12,000 pesos. Ang net proceeds ay 360,000 pesos. Nakompute na natin yung net proceeds. Ang gagawin natin is to compare the net proceeds sa carrying amount of non-cash assets. But take note, you have to exclude receivable from A. By excluding receivable from A, ang non-cash assets ay accounts receivable, inventory, at equipment net of accumulated depreciation. Ang carrying amount ng AR ay 60,000 pesos. Ang carrying amount ng inventory ay 120,000 pesos. At ang carrying amount ng equipment net of accumulated depreciation ay 290,000 pesos. So, 60,000 pesos plus 120,000 pesos plus 290,000 pesos, that is equal to 470,000 pesos. As you can see, mas mataas ang carrying amount or mas malaki yung carrying amount ng non-cash assets kaysa sa net proceeds. Therefore, merong loss. And the loss is 110,000 pesos. After computing the loss, ang susunod yung gagawin is to allocate the loss to the partner's capital balances based on their profit or loss ratio. Ang profit or loss ratio ay 60 to 40. 60% for A and 40% for B. Ang capital balance ni A ay 250,000 pesos at ang capital balance ni B ay 200,000 pesos. All in all, the total capital balance is 450,000 pesos. In this problem, merong receivable from A at payable to B. May receivable from a partner at merong payable to a partner. Kapag merong payable to a partner, idadagdag yan. At kapag merong receivable from a partner, idideduct yan. So yung payable to be na 20,000 pesos that is added and the receivable from A na 10,000 pesos that is deducted. So 20,000 pesos minus 10,000 pesos that is equal to 10,000 pesos. 250,000 pesos minus 10,000 pesos that is 240,000 pesos. 200,000 pesos plus 20,000 pesos, that is 220,000 pesos. 450,000 pesos plus 10,000 pesos, that is 460,000 pesos. At this point, we can now allocate the loss to the partner's capital balances based on their profit or loss ratio. Ang na-compute na loss kanina ay 110,000 pesos. 
i-allocate natin yung negative 110,000 pesos based on the profit or loss ratio of the partners. So for A, negative 110,000 pesos times 60%. That is equal to 66,000 pesos. Or negative 66,000 pesos. And for B, negative 110,000 pesos times 40%. That is equal to negative 44,000 pesos. At this point, we can now compute for the cash distributions to the partners. Ang cash distribution kay partner A ay 174,000 pesos. At ang cash distribution para kay B ay 176,000 pesos. All in all, the total cash distributions amount to 350,000 pesos. I-check natin kung tama ba yung 350,000 pesos. May cash on hand na 20,000 pesos. At ang nakompute natin net proceeds kanina ay 360,000 pesos. 360,000 pesos plus 20,000 pesos, ilan yan? 380,000 pesos. Then, ididedact natin yung accounts payable na 30,000 pesos. 380,000 pesos minus 30,000 pesos. Ang cash available for distribution to partners ay 350,000 pesos. So, yung total amount na na-receive ng partners na 350,000 pesos ay tama. Let us now proceed to case 2, installment liquidation. Don will be liquidated on installment basis. Cash distributions to the partners will be made as cash becomes available. In the first month of the liquidation process, the non-cash assets were realized as follows. A. Half of the accounts receivable was collected. Of the remaining half, 10,000 pesos accounts are deemed worthless. B. 75% of the inventory was sold at 80% of cost. C. Equipment with carrying amount of 200,000 pesos was sold for 185,000 pesos. And D. 12,000 pesos liquidation expenses were paid. Additional 5,000 pesos liquidation expenses are expected to be incurred in subsequent periods. Requirement. Compute for the cash distributions to the partners. Same process, i-compute muna natin yung net proceeds. After computing the net proceeds, i-compare natin yan sa carrying amount of non-cash assets para malaman natin kung meron bang gain or loss. It says here in case 2, installment liquidation, that half of the accounts receivable was collected. Kalahati lamang ng accounts receivable na 60,000 pesos ang nakolect. So yung remaining half, that will be ignored in the computation. So yung collection from accounts receivable, that is 60,000 pesos times one half or 60,000 pesos times 50%. That is equal to 30,000 pesos. Next, sale of inventory. 75% of the inventory was sold at 80% of cost. So 120,000 pesos times 75% times 80%, that is equal to 72,000 pesos. Next, sale of equipment, 185,000 pesos. My actual liquidation expenses na 12,000 pesos. I-deduct natin yung 12,000 pesos. 
Aside from actual liquidation expenses, meron din tayong estimated future liquidation expenses na 5,000 pesos. Same treatment, idididuct natin yung 5,000 pesos na estimated future liquidation expenses. At this point, we can now compute the net proceeds. 30,000 pesos plus 72,000 pesos plus 185,000 pesos minus 12,000 pesos minus 5,000 pesos. That is equal to 270,000 pesos. We can now compare the net proceeds with the carrying amount of all non-cash assets. But take note, you have to exclude receivable from partner A. Ang non-cash assets natin dito ay AR, inventory at equipment. AR, 60,000 pesos. Inventory, 120,000 pesos. And equipment, 290,000 pesos. All in all, that is equal to 470,000 pesos. Since mas malaki yung carrying amount of non-cash assets kaysa sa net proceeds, there is a loss na 200,000 pesos. Next, i-allocate natin yung loss based on the profit or loss ratio of the partners. Ang capital balance ni A ay 250,000 pesos at ang capital balance ni B ay 200,000 pesos for a total of 450,000 pesos. In this problem, meron tayong receivable from A na 10,000 pesos at payable to B na 20,000 pesos. Yung receivable from A na 10,000 pesos that is deducted. At yung payable to B na 20,000 pesos that is added. 20,000 pesos minus 10,000 pesos that is equal to 10,000 pesos. 250,000 pesos minus 10,000 pesos that is 240,000 pesos. 200,000 pesos plus 20,000 pesos, that is equal to 220,000 pesos. And 450,000 pesos plus 10,000 pesos, that is 460,000 pesos. At this point, we can now allocate the loss to the partner's capital balances based on their profit or loss ratio. Ang loss na compute natin kanina ay 200,000 pesos. I-allocate natin yung negative 200,000 pesos based on the profit or loss ratio of the partners. For A, negative 200,000 pesos times 60%, that is negative 120,000 pesos. And for B, Negative 200,000 pesos times 40%. That is equal to negative 80,000 pesos. At this point, we can now compute for the cash distributions to the partners. The amount received by partner A is 120,000 pesos and the amount received by partner B is 140,000 pesos. All in all, the total amount received by partners is 260,000 pesos. I-check natin kung tama ba yung 260,000 pesos. Yung cash on hand natin ay 20,000 pesos at yung net proceeds ay 270,000 pesos. 20,000 pesos plus 270,000 pesos that is equal to 290,000 pesos. Then, idididuct natin yung accounts payable na 30,000 pesos. 290,000 pesos minus 30,000 pesos, that is equal to 260,000 pesos. And that is the cash available for distributions to partners. 
Therefore, yung 260,000 pesos na total amount received by partners ay tama. Let us now proceed to case 3, gain on settlement of liability. All the non-cash assets except the receivable from A were realized for 250,000 pesos. The accounts payable was settled for 24,000 pesos after offset of a 6,000 pesos credit memorandum. Requirement, compute for the cash distributions to the partners. In this case, yung proceeds sa pagbenta ng non-cash assets ay 250,000 pesos. Yung proceeds sa pagbenta ng non-cash assets na 250,000 pesos, i-compare natin yan sa carrying amount of non-cash assets except receivable from A. Para malaman natin kung meron bang gain or loss on sale of assets. AR ay 60,000 pesos, inventory ay 120,000 pesos, at equipment ay 290,000 pesos. All in all, the carrying amount of non-cash assets except receivable from A is 470,000 pesos. As you can see, mas malaki yung carrying amount of non-cash assets kaysa sa proceeds na 250,000 pesos. Therefore, there is a loss on sale of assets na 220,000 pesos. It says in this case that the accounts payable was settled for 24,000 pesos after offset of a 6,000 credit memorandum. Diba ang accounts payable ay 30,000 pesos because in offset yung credit memorandum na 6,000 pesos, yung accounts payable na settle lang siya ng 24,000 pesos. Therefore, meron tayong gain on settlement of liability na 6,000 pesos. Take note, pag sinabing offset, ang ibig sabihin niyan, deduction. Yung gain on settlement of liability na 6,000 pesos, i-add natin yan. Therefore, the net loss is 214,000 pesos. Next, i-allocate natin yung loss based on the profit or loss ratio of the partners. Ang capital balance ni A ay 250,000 pesos. Ang capital balance ni B ay 200,000 pesos for a total of 450,000 pesos. Yung receivable from A na 10,000 pesos that will be deducted at yung payable to B na 20,000 pesos that will be added. 20K minus 10K that is equal to 10,000 pesos. 250K minus 10K that is 240K. 200K plus 20K that is 220K. 450K plus 10K, that is 460,000 pesos. At this point, we can now allocate the loss based on the profit or loss ratio of the partners. Ang net loss ay 214,000 pesos. I-allocate natin yung negative 214,000 pesos based on the profit or loss ratio of the partners. For A, negative 214K times 60%, that is equal to 100 or negative 128,400 pesos. And for B, negative 214K times 40%, that is equal to negative 85,600 pesos. So, the total amount received by partner A is 111,600 pesos. And the amount received by partner B is 134,400 
pesos. All in all, the total amount received by partners is 246,000 pesos. I-check natin kung tama ba yung 246,000 pesos. Yung cash on hand ay 20K at yung proceeds sa pagbenta ng non-cash assets ay 250K. 20K plus 250K that is equal to 270,000 pesos. Then, we will deduct the accounts payable na 24,000 pesos after offsetting the 6,000 pesos credit memorandum. So, 270,000 pesos minus 24,000 pesos, that is equal to 246,000 pesos, and that is the cash available for distribution to partners. Therefore, yung amount received by partners na 246,000 pesos ay tamang.